All right, guys, with this recording, okay. Welcome everyone and welcome back to the channel. It's now October and so that means scary, spooky, uh, everything. I was gonna say skeletons, but whatever. Um, so Spirit Halloween is now back out of the closet, you know, occupying every, uh, you know, un, un, unopened business. I don't know what I'm saying. Um, what do you call it? Like condemned build, not condemned buildings, but vacant buildings. There's the word, vacant buildings. They're around Halloween. People are already talking about watching scary movies, blah, 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 blah. And I thought it would be a fun idea to step out of uh, the norm and read a story. I went over to Reddit and I kind of just never used Reddit ever. This is probably the first time without accidentally opening it um and i just kind of poked around for some stories um people kind of told me i should probably use my voice a little bit more uh so this is pretty much the best way and so i've been practicing and though i haven't been practicing my reading but uh it should be a little short story and uh hopefully you guys do enjoy so the story that we're reading is titled, well, first it's from uh, horror underscore stories. The title, The Missing Things. It started with the small stuff, my keys, my phone charger, even the remote for the TV, all seemed to vanish when I needed them most, only to turn up in a strange place later. At first I brushed off. I live alone, so there's no one else to misplace things. I figured I was just getting careless, overworked maybe. But the more it happened, the more I started to wonder if something was off. It began innocent, innocently enough. I'd come home from work, toss my keys on the kitchen counter like I always did, and go about my evening. But then I went to grab them the next morning and they wouldn't be there. I'd scour the house searching through drawers, behind cushions, even checking the car. Nothing. Hours later, I'd find them in places I would never put them on. On the bathroom sink, under the bed, even inside the refrigerator once. I laughed it off the first few times. I'm getting old, I joked to myself, losing my mind. But then it wasn't so funny anymore. The remote was the next to go. I'm not much of a TV person, but I'll watch the occasional late night movie. I distinctly remember setting the remote down on the coffee table after watching something... something forgettable. The next evening, the remote was gone. I tore the room apart. Cushions overturned, drawers opened, shelves empty. Still nothing. Two days passed and I found it under the bed. Not beside the bed? Under it. Deep in the corner where I'd never had placed it. I tried to ignore it, but the feeling crept up on me, a strange unease like someone had been in my house. Like I wasn't alone, but the doors were always locked, the windows shut, no signs of forced entry. No one else had a key. It's just me, wasn't it? Then my shoes went missing, the pair I wear every day. I come home from work, slip them on, off at the... <laughs> I slip them off at the front door like always and went to bed. Next morning, gone. I found them two days later, perfectly placed in my closet. The thing is, I never keep them in the closet. I've always left them by the door. That's when the paranoia started. I began wondering if maybe someone was coming into my house when I wasn't there. Some weirdo slipping in, moving things around just to mess with me. I even considered setting up a camera. But something about the idea made me feel stupid. Who would break in just to hide my stuff? It had to be me, right? Maybe stress was getting to me. Maybe I was losing control. But it got worse. My wallet was the first major item to disappear. I remember leaving it on the kitchen counter before bed. When I woke up, it was gone. I tore the house apart again. I checked the car, my jacket, pockets, even the trash. Days passed and I was ready to cancel my cards when it finally showed up, tucked under a pile of books on my nightstand. I didn't put it there. I know I didn't. And then my phone went missing. 
I always kept it on the nightstand when I slept. Always. But one morning, it was gone. Just gone. I didn't sleep that night. I couldn't. I kept picturing someone creeping into my room while I slept, reaching for my phone, maybe standing there watching me. I stayed up, pacing the house, listening for the faintest creak of the floorboards, watching the shadows move across the walls. But no one came. It took a week to find my phone. I found it under the couch, wedged deep between the cushions, as if someone had deliberately put a sh pushed it there. My heart raced as I held it in my hand. There was no mistake. Someone was toying with me. But how? Why? I finally gave in and set up a camera. Just two. One in the living room and one in the hallway, facing my bedroom door. If someone was coming into my house, I would catch them. But that night, something even worse happened. I woke up in the middle of the night to a sound. A soft, distant thud. I froze in bed. My heart pounding in my chest, straining to hear it again. And then it came. Another quiet thud. Like something being moved. I got up, grabbed the nearest object for protection, a broom of all things, and crept through the house. Nothing. No one. But when I went to check the camera footage the next morning, the files were gone, completely erased. My blood ran cold. I didn't sleep the next night, or the night after that. I stopped eating properly. I didn't trust myself anymore. Could it have been me all along moving things, hiding things? losing things? Was I erasing the footage without realizing it? I stopped going to work. I stopped leaving the house entirely. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was inside, waiting for me to leave, waiting to rearrange my life, to push me further towards the edge. Then, one morning, I woke up to find something on the kitchen counter, something I hadn't seen in days. My phone but it wasn't the phone that terrified me, no. What chilled me to my core was the text message I opened on the screen. Found it yet? It wasn't my text. It wasn't my message. And then I, and I realized then, with a sickening dread, that I was never alone in the first place. And maybe, I never would be. Interesting, but not very scary, to be honest. That only took like eight minutes. It was neat to read, but mm, I don't know. I've hear I've heard other people read stories. I like hearing some people read stories or even dissect like footage of stuff. But uh, usually these other stories I was hoping to stumble across mm, are like quite a bit more descriptive there's more building this wasn't bad and it only took a few minutes but uh hopefully you guys enjoy this if you do let me know man i'll keep pumping these out these aren't too bad i'll try and add some like visuals so you're not just listening to my you know dulcet voice for eight minutes but if you guys enjoyed you know, like down below, didn't like it, dislike it. If you have a story that you would like me to read that you know of, you can go ahead and leave it in the comment below. I'll find it and read it if I can or wherever it may be. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for all notifications so you get every video, every short, and check out the community. I'll, from time to time, like to ask questions, you know, about hobbies and interests or things that I really do want to know what you guys feel about. And until next time, I will see you guys later.